Being 7 o'clock, we'll call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. Mayor Bospis. Here. Commissioner Bauer. Here. Commissioner Gage. Here. Commissioner Gary. Here. Commissioner Lynn. Here. Commissioner Twardy. Here. Okay, we're all here. Please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you very much. If I could ask those with uh, cell phones, if they would <coughs> please put them on vibrate or silence them, uh, we would appreciate it. Also at this time, we'd like to have uh, a moment of silence uh, for three individuals, uh, Dr. Tom Pleger, uh, Dr. Lulu Kenda, and also State Representative uh, John Kivala, who was the uh, mayor of uh, Marquette before he became the state uh, representative in that area, please. Thank you very much. Okay, at this time, we'll have a uh, proclamation for the uh, Peace Officers Memorial Day functions and, a, and a, also a uh, proclamation. So if uh, Chief Riley would meet me at the podium, please. The uh, City of Sault Ste. Marie Proclamation, Peace Officers, Memorial Day, May 15th, 2017. Whereas police officers have protected the lives and property of citizens of our nation through their dedication to service since early in our history. And whereas as the guardians of our community, police officers perform their duties around the clock to defend our homes and families from those that would seek to, to cause us harm. And whereas it is important for citizens to understand the hazards and sacrifices that our police officers and their families make to honor the heroism of all of our law enforcement officers, especially those that have lost their lives. And whereas only when working together with our police officers can our community provide a safe environment for our families. And whereas by joint resolution in 1962, Congress passed and President Kennedy proclaimed May 15th of each year, Peace Officers Memorial Day and further the week in which May 15th falls as Police Week. Now therefore be resolved that the City Commission of the City of Sault Ste. Marie hereby proclaims May 15th, 2017 as Peace Officers, Memorial Day and the week of May 14th through May 20th, 2017 as Police Week. And call upon the citizens of Sault Ste. Marie to express their appreciation to these men and women, past and present, who by their commitment to their responsibilities have provided a dedicated service to this community. In witness thereof, I hereto set my hand and cause the seal of the city of Sault Ste. Marie to be affixed this 15th day of May, 2017. Anthony G. Bospis, Mayor. John? Thank you, Mayor. Okay. I appreciate that. I'd like to thank, on behalf of all the law enforcement in the uh, area, I'd like to thank the Mayor and the Commission for this proclamation. It's very important to us. Um, I'd like to remind everybody that this Thursday there will be a vehicle procession from uh, the Armory down Portage to Ashman to Easter Day and out to LSSU where at uh, 11 o'clock a uh, ceremony will begin. Uh, the mayor will be speaking, city manager will, will be speaking. Uh, we plan on having law enforcement officers from all across the UP and Ontario there as well as families from uh, the fallen officers. Uh, we appreciate the support of the community uh, over the past week, over this weekend. Uh, our training room got decorated with letters and cards and all kinds of stuff from elementary school kids from Pickford out to uh, Brimley. Uh, it was really neat. I came in this morning and saw that and it was pretty neat. So thank you very much. Yeah. Th thank you, John. Item number two, uh, Sue Events, Mary Jo Duvall. Um, presentation on the citywide cleanup and also the t-shirt design winners here. Good evening everyone. I'm here just to let you know that everything is on track with our citywide cleanup which will be this Saturday from 9 to 12 and it will follow with a picnic up at Sherman Park. Um, and this year we were able to bring back the famous t-shirt contest 
And so tonight I would like um, to do a presentation with that. Um, first off, I also would like to let everybody know that we've had a lot of local support for this cleanup this year. And if you don't mind, I'll put my glasses on. Uh, we have Waste Management, Cloverland Electric, Parker's Hardware, and Lock City Home Center, who all help support us with garbage bags and gloves and all the stuff that we need to do the dirty work. Um, also, in support of our picnic, we had Sears, who donated one of our large prizes, which is a large grill um, that will be raffled off for anybody that participates this Saturday, as well as Maloney's Alley, Palace, Domino's, Thinking of You, Zach's Fudge Shop, Baldwin's, Neville's, Pure Crunchery, and Frito-Lay, who has supported the picnic as well. So right now, let's get to the fun part of it. I would like to invite Madison Monday up. Madison is from St. Mary's School. She's a fifth grader, and she was one of the individuals who um, drew a design for the t-shirt contest and won. We um, had selected it just after um, spring break. So you want to turn around and show everybody your great design? Didn't you do a great job? <laughs> I'd like to give you this gift card for your hard work and appreciation. And um, Mayor Boskus has a few words to say if you want to just stay right there, okay? okay. Thank you, Mary Jo. Take a picture. Okay. It's a pleasure to present this to you, Madison. Uh, it says, dear. Dear Madison, on behalf of the City Commission, City Administration, and the citizens of Sault Ste. Marie, it is a pleasure for, for me to congratulate you on winning the t-shirt contest for our citywide cleanup. Citywide cleanup has been an annual event in May for over 20 years. Hundreds of citizens have participated, which has contributed to a great deal to the beautification of our city. You are one of seven entries of third, fourth, and fifth graders from all over the city. Your t-shirt will be worn with pride by many Sault Ste. Marie citizens who helped clean up our city that day. Keep up the good work. Thanks again for participating in the contest. Sincerely, Anthony G. Bosbus, Mayor of the City of Sault Ste. Marie. Madison, congratulations. Okay, thanks again and best wishes. Item number three, uh, public comment on scheduled agenda items. Any person may reserve time to speak on an agenda item not to exceed three minutes per person. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on an agenda item? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to item number four. Uh, the, consent, the consent agenda, uh, Deputy City Manager Troyer. Under the consent agenda, A, minute approval. One, approval of the minutes of the regular City Commission meeting of May 1st, 2017. Recommended action, approve the minutes of the regular City Commission meeting of May 1st, 2017. Item two, acceptance of the minutes of the following boards and commissions. A, Airport Advisory Board of April 13th. B, Brownfield Redevelopment Authority of February 14th. C, Community Services Board of April 25th. D, Economic Development Corporation of April 11th. E, Historic Structures Management Committee of April 27th. F, PEHP Firefighters Unit of May 3rd. G, Police and Fire Pension Board of April 5th. And H, Tax Increment Finance Authority um, of April 11th. Recommended action is to accept the minutes of the various boards and commissions. Item B, appointments and resignations. One, appointment to the Planning Commission. Recommended action, confirm the mayor's appointment of Seth Harris to the Planning Commission to fill the balance of a term to expire April 19th, 2018. Item two, appointment to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Recommended action, appoint Ken Dutton Jr. to the Zoning Board of Appeals to fill the balance of a term to expire June 1, 2018. Three, reappointment to the Economic Development Corporation. Recommended action, reappoint Tom Viam, Doug Walton, and Dan Dasho, and Steve Gleason to the Economic Development Corporation for terms to expire June 1, 2023. Item four, reappointment to the PEHP Firefighters Unit. Recommended action, reappoint Andy Morrison and Steve Canello to the PEHP Firefighters Unit for a term to expire March 15, 2020. 
Item 5, resignation from the Community Services Board. Recommended action, accept the resignation of Kristen Dunbar from the Community Services for Board for a term that is set to expire July 1, 2017, and send a letter of thanks for her service. Item 6, resi six resignation from the Community Services Board. Recommended action, accept the resignation of Jesse Beckett from the Community Services Board for a term that is set to expire July 1, 2019, and send a letter of thanks for her service to this board. Item C, communications. One, from the Chippewa County, waiver of first right of refusal on Chippewa County tax foreclosures. Recommended action is to authorize the city manager to sign the waiver of first right of refusal that confirms that the city's interest in acquiring 606 Eureka Street, parcel number 051-330-004, Dash five zero zero and six twenty nine Magazine Street, parcel number zero five one dash eight eight zero dash zero zero seven dash zero zero, and waive the right to any other parcels from Chippewa County. Item D, City Manager's Report. One, receive the report from City Attorney Canello on municipal election procedures. Recommended action is to receive the report and place on file. Okay, thank you. Is there a commissioner would like something further explained on the consent agenda? Uh, commissioner Twain? Just a quick comment by looking at all of the appointments and the resignations. I see that now again we have two new vacancies on Community Services Board. And just to remind people, if you are interested, you can go to the city website. And it's a great board, very active. So if you're interested in that Community mm -hmm. Services, please. Thank you. Commissioner Gage. Um, I just wanted to say, echo Commissioner Schwari's comments that we're appointing some great folks, and I think it's worth knowing uh, that, that one of them that we're appointing is in the audience, Seth Harris, who we are appointing to the um, Planning Commission. Um, he's going to do a great job. Uh, and with that, I move approval of the consent agenda. Support. It's been moved, supported. Are there any questions? A roll call, please. Mayor Bosmus? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item 5, Special Orders of Business. A, Public Hearing on Single Lot Special Assessment Roll SL-1N-17 and SL-1W-17. A is Public Comments and B is Action on the Special Lot Assessment Rolls. And I'd just like to note there was an updated list handed out to the Commission on the dais. Okay, thank you. Uh, City Manager Turner. Thank you, Mayor. Twice annually, in time for both the Summer Tax Bill and Winter Tax Bill, City Administration develops a list of unpaid bills related to specific properties for consideration as single lot special assessments. This includes bills generated by the Inspection Department as well as any outstanding water bills where water has been terminated and bills remain unpaid. With the list in front of the City Commission, I would recommend that the Mayor conduct a public hearing on single lot special assessment roll SL-1N-17 and single lot special assessment roll SL-1W-17 following the public hearing and considering any comments that the City Commission confirm single lot special assessment rolls. Okay, thank you. At this time, we will hold the uh, public hearing on the single lot special assessment roll as uh, explained by the City Manager. Is there anyone that would like to make a comment at this time? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to the City Commission. Uh, Commissioner Lynn. So move the city manager's recommendation. Support. Support. It's been moved, supported. Uh, are there any questions? A roll call, please. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? <coughs> yes. Mayor Bosmus? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, item B under special orders of business is public hearings and adoption of the 2017 2018 fiscal year budget. Okay, thank you. City manager. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> As commissioners are aware, within recent weeks, the City Commission has received, reviewed, modified, and formally introduced for adoption a budget for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2017 and ending June 30, 2018. Connectedly, at its May 1st regular meeting, the City Commission scheduled various public hearings regarding the proposed budget to be held during this meeting. More specifically, this includes four separate public hearings that must be held to establish the tax levy for the city, the city's user fee schedule, water and sewer system charges, and the General Appropriations Act, which authorizes the expenditures of funds in the new and upcoming fiscal year for operating budgets as well as for capital outlay purposes. The budget is the result of many hours of work 
by department heads, the finance department, as well as myself, and was subject to review and revision by the city commission during the budget work session and special meeting to reconcile the budget that were held to form a consensus on each of the line items included within the overall budget and financial plan. The entirety of the information from the proposed budget has been posted on the city's website, www.suecity.com. Additionally, copies of the budget are available in the city clerk's office as well as at the Bayless Public Library. A summary of the information that is a subject of each public hearing follows as such. The first pertaining to the property tax levy, with the proposed property tax levy for the 17-18 fiscal year being 16.8139 mills for city operating purposes, as well as 0 0.5632 mills for waste collection and composting. In addition, the city lev levies a millage to support the police fire pension system and based on the actuarial requirements for the police fire pension for the upcoming fiscal year, a levy of 5.4502 mills is required. The operating millages would remain the same in the upcoming fiscal year with the police fire pension millage being increased from 5.3323 to 5.4502 mills. The final resolution for purposes of establishing a 2017 tax levy for the City of Sault Ste. Marie has been included for commission review and action. The next public hearing pertains to water and sewer rates, with the water and sewer rates proposed for the upcoming fiscal year reflecting the actual cost for the water and sewer system based on the estimated sale of water during the upcoming fiscal year. The proposed rates are composed of a monthly administrative charge, which is based on meter size. The administrative charge covers the cost of water meters, meter reading billing, and other administrative expenses that are charged on a flat fee per each city customer per month. There are two variable charges which include the commodity charge that covers the cost of water production and sewage treatment as well as a capital charge which covers the long-term bond payments for work that has been completed on the CSO separation project as well as other improvements. The charges for costs outside of the city limits as well as the bulk water production costs are included within a presented resolution for the adoption of the rates for the upcoming fiscal year. The water and sewer rate increase for customers using 700 cubic feet of water per month for the average resident residential household is approximately 4.4% over last year's rate. The third public hearing pertains to the user fee schedule. As noted, annually the city reviews and modifies the user fee schedule for the upcoming fiscal year. The user fee schedule is a comprehensive list of various fees that are charged for services within the city as modified by the City Commission during the budget work session. Along with the other budget documents, the user fee schedule has been posted on the City's website and has been available in the City Clerk's Office and at the Bayless Public Library. A resolution for the purpose of adopting a fee schedule for the upcoming fiscal year is included for the Commission's review and action. And the fourth and final public hearing pertains to the General Appropriations Act, which as noted is required for completing the budget adoption process. The General Appropriations Act outlines the estimated revenues and authorized expenditure levels for the city's various funds. The General Appropriations Act for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2017 and ending June 30, 2018 has been included for commission review and action. And again, would like to thank the department heads, uh, Finance Director Collins, Deputy City Manager, uh, former Commissioner Bill Munsell, and the City Commission for their extensive participation in this process. Okay, thank you. There are uh, five uh, recommendations. I believe we'll just take those individually because the public hearing follow or is preceding uh, four of those. So at this time, uh, we'll hold a public hearing on the tax levy for the operating expenses for the city of Sault Ste. Marie as explained by the city manager. Uh, is there anyone in the audience like to make a comment at this time? Hearing on, we'll go to the commission, uh, Commissioner Gary. I make a motion that the City Commission adopt the included final resolution for purposes of establishing a 2017 tax levy for the City of Sault Ste. Marie and the City Operating Millage at 16.8139 mills, waste collection and composting millage at 0 0.5632 mills, and the Police and Fire Pension Millage at 5.4502 mills. Support. It's been moved supported. Are there any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Mayor Bospis? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Motion carried, thank you. And at this time, we'll hold a uh, public hearing on the adoption of the water and sewer rates for the fiscal year. 
uh, as explained by the city manager beginning July 1st, 2017 and ending July 30th, 2018. Is anyone in the audience like to make a comment at this time? Okay, we're hearing none. Commissioner Gary. I make a motion the city commission approve a resolution for adopting the water and sewer rates for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2017 and ending June 30th, 2018. Support. It's been moved, supported. Our, uh, Commissioner Gage. I do want to um, make a point quick because um, I had a number of people sure. call me <clears throat> in regards to the water bills. Um, again, you know, this is kind of old news for us, but it's new news for some folks. When we build this water uh, budget for water and sewer funds, that's based on breaking even. That's based on not turning a profit, but on just delivering the proper services. So that's based on users using the water. So I think it's worth noting that, um, even though we've heard it every, every time we talk about this, it's worth it to, to bring that up and to address it. Excellent point. Uh, as we proceed, um, uh, this is part of the, at least the third time that we've dealt with these. And since uh, October, the department heads have been working uh, since last year and the commission since, uh, since uh, February uh, on the budget process. So uh, this is the final procedure on doing that. But those are excellent comments. And it's taken a long it's taken quite a while to get to this stage, but that's why you don't see a lot of questions, I think, because we've had a lot of time to ask questions and, and the public comment at the same time. So thank you. Um, any other question, Commissioner Bauer? That said, I use as much water as I possibly can. <laughs> thank so you. in my business, I would appreciate it if everyone else would follow suit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, uh, and we have added water users uh, over the years and uh, people are just consuming uh, water a little more uh, uh, lightly and uh, over the last 10 years I think uh, it has been reduced by 1% a year for the last 10 years um, which is surprising when you look at the number of uh, car wash that we have and some of the apartments that have been built so um, it's, it's just one of those things that we have to deal with as a city. Uh, any other comments? And we have a motion and support. A roll call, please. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Mayor Bosmus? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Motion carried, thank you. And uh, item three, uh, public uh, hearing on the proposed uh, user fee schedule for the 2017-18 fiscal year. Uh, Commissioner Gary? Are you user Your Honor? Public, public I'm sorry. Excuse me. Public hearing on the user fee uh, for the... Uh, Next fiscal year, is there anyone in the audience that would like to make a comment on the user fee schedule? Okay, hearing none, now we'll go to Commissioner Gary. I make a motion the City Commission approve a resolution for the purpose of adopting a fee schedule for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2017 and ending June 30, 2018. Support. It's been moved, supported. Are there any questions? Roll call, please. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Mayor Bosmus? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Okay, motion carried. And the fourth public hearing is on the General Appropriations Act for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2017 and ending July 30th, 2018. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to make a comment at this time? Okay, thank you. We'll close the public hearing. Commissioner Gary. I make a motion the City Commission approve the General Appropriations Act for the fiscal year beginning June, July 1st, 2017 and ending June 30th, 2018. Okay, and item number five is, is there without a public hearing? Support. Mm -hmm. no. Commissioner Gary. I make, a uh, I make a motion the City Commission accept the budget for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2018 and ending June 30, 2019. Support. That's Okay, and that, that budget is the uh, uh, sort of the preliminary budget for the second fiscal year that we do now, a two-year uh, budget uh, cycle, and that is the, the second year, and then that's a, a working, uh, that's all in a working mode type of thing, but uh, we certainly will look at that going forward. Uh, Commissioner Gary. I had a few comments. Sure. I know Commissioner, former Commissioner Munsell would want us to make these. Sure, <laughs> yes. <laughs> There were a few areas that caused a little bit of concern because they have an increased budget commitment. And one was the MERS uh, retirement account. Yes. And because of MERS, we're uh, looking at dramatic increase in contribution levels up to 76%. Uh, police and fire pension fund is improving, but still is a large liability. 
Water and sewer rates we just discussed. Uh, vehicle purchases, I think for the first time in a long time, we are buying one on an installment purchase contract. Uh, it makes sense, the rates are great, and it is a very large dollar purchase, but I think it's uh, an indication that uh, times are a little bit skinnier now going forward. And of course, the parking structure and the TIFs uh, were based on some faulty assumptions. Value of the TIFs have gone down. But with all of the uh, five mentioned uh, um, areas causing concern, the city has done appropriate steps to make sure that we're mitigating uh, those uh, uh, concerns. Um, so I wanted to kind of go over some of the positives that okay. uh, we reviewed Excellent. a little bit last year. The city quite a few years ago put a, a group together of, of people from the community and came up with some guiding principles. And those guiding principles are, are used every time that we go through this budget process and they're smart and they're rational and I think they help everybody mm -hmm. stay grounded and keep things together. Um, the commission had approved a fund balance policy we talked about quite a bit and a debt management policy which I think are, are very uh, smart and fiscally sound. The city engineer and the city manager had put together a new six year capital improvement policy that's been in place for a few years which is really good with planning for major purchases. And then the city manager and city finance director have put together a two-year budgeting, which is the second year, I think, of that, which helps us to look and forecast uh, where we're going. I think, uh, as the mayor mentioned, the admin and department heads have been working on this for about seven months. This is a long process, and we've had quite a few meetings, but uh, nowhere near as many as the administration. So I commend them on a great job. Uh, I commend the City Commission for not adding a bunch of large goals with large dollar amounts. I, I think a long time ago we used to do that and it's, we're getting a little smarter about uh, the budget process and, and the timing of that. And I think that uh, despite uh, declining revenues in some areas, especially revenue sharing, uh, this is a, a great budget and this year has $3.3 .3 million in capital projects in it and 712000 in capital equipment purchases. So. Um, the uh, city is, is doing a great job maintaining its bond rating and, uh, and is able to put money into projects that are necessary to make this a better community. We'd love to have a lot more cash flowing so we could <laughs> fix the carbide this year and do a lot of the other projects, but mm -hmm. uh, we are doing very well, I think, within the uh, means and the budget that we have. So congratulations thank and, and good job to thank, the Thank you very much for those, those comments, Commissioner Geary. Uh, anyone else? Commissioner Twardy. Yeah, the, well, I just wanted to um, say about the one point about the, it, that is the one time of the year where the city commission can come and pitch any sort of idea or wish that you would like to see done in the in the city. And I, I think that this commission has been really, really diligent over the last couple of years looking at the budget and realizing that there's not a lot of extra capital outlay and money that we can just do any sort of wish or project that we want to do and I think also keeping in mind and knowing that our committees and our boards that function underneath the city are also bringing recommendations to the City Commission and really being mindful of paying attention to them more than just our own wishes and wants and yeah so I just wanted to say point out that that I think that that was a really good thing this year that we didn't just have a giant wish list Thank you, and, and before we leave this, uh, certainly on behalf of the commission, we certainly like to thank the administration, but ultimately the taxpayers in this community, uh, the businesses in this, in this community that continue to uh, provide the income for this community because we do get revenue sharing, we do get some state dollars, and we do apply for a lot of grants that the city has been very fortunate to get. But uh, a lot of the budget that we have comes from on the backs of the people that pay the taxes. And living in this community and paying the taxes in this community, we certainly thank those people that continue to do that. That, to makes, that makes Sault Ste. Marie what it is. And we know going forward, any fundraisers that folks have because of illness or because of a travesty that happens uh, in your families, the people in this community continue to come out and support those things. And, and that's, again, what makes uh, Sault Ste. Marie what it is. So we continue to appreciate all of that. With that, we have a motion and support. Anyone else? Uh, roll. Oh, roll just Commissioner Lynn. Uh, Oliver, what is our bond rating? Same matter. Thank you for that question, Commissioner. Current bond rating is A plus for the general municipal obligations. Which is uh, very, very good, by the way. <laughs> Correct. From the standard of force. Yes. Thank Better you. Than yeah. So, with us, a call. Roll call, please. 
Commissioner Torty? Yes. Mayor Boswis? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Motion carried, thank you. Turn the page here and I think it's into the uh, city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor. Item A under city manager's report would provide for the award of a bid to PK Contracting for citywide pavement markings. On Tuesday, May 9th, sealed bids were received for placing center line and lane line pavement markings on a city street system. Two bids were received for this work, including one in the amount of $23,653.54 from PK Contracting of Lake City, Michigan, and one in the amount of $27,732.75 from Michigan Pavement Markings of Wyoming, Michigan. The pavement marking project consists of furnishing the materials and placing pavement markings at locations designated by the engineering department. The markings will include the placing of reflective glass beads in the paint, which will provide increased visibility and longer wear, and will also include a small amount of pavement marking removal on Three Mile Road. The completion date for the pavement markings is June 23, 2017, and accordingly, it's my recommendation that the City Commission award the pavement marking contract to PK Contracting of Lake City, Michigan in the amount of $23,653.54 as that was the company being the lowest responsive bidder. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Twarty. Thank you. One quick comment. Um, this was sort of a funny story. Last Friday I was on my way to Paradise for a senior luncheon and, and someone had mentioned to me they were really concerned about the lack of pavement markings up by the new Meyer area and the cluster that's going on up there now with the three new lights and you're not sure which lane to be in. And we have such great department heads. I immediately reached out to Linda Basista, just sent her a quick text and said, do you, what's the plans for getting the markings done? She got back to me right away and they will be done before Meyer opens this weekend so there won't be any confusion on which lane to be in when you are trying to get through those three traffic lights. Um, so that being said, I move that the City Commission award the pavement marking contract to PK Contracting of Lake City, Michigan in the amount of $23,653.54, being the lowest responsive bidder. Support. It's been moved support. Are there any questions? Commissioner Gage. There was just one quick question I had, and maybe it's going to make me look stupid, but I think I have it figured out. Pavement marking means like road lines and mm -hmm. arrows mm -hmm. in the road, that kind of stuff, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Gary. Any bike lanes in these? Uh, manager. Thank you for that question. Actually, good question. Anticipating uh, questions, such as, uh, there has been discussion, and this uh, this would be separate from projects which would include expanded bicycle lanes on West Fourth Avenue when uh, that's reconstructed from Oak to Hyde, and also uh, this does not include or does not is not conflated with the project that would be completed on West Easter Day Corridor uh, between about the interchange I-75 and Meridian. In, in front of the university. So is that all uh, the way to Ryan? Is, That's all the way to Ryan Street. Uh, correct with Ryan. So this is something that in the future when traffic studies are done to assess the feasibility of installing bicycle lanes, certainly this would be one opportunity to look at those um, kind of, of improvements. Okay. We have a motion in support. Uh, roll call please. Mayor Bosmus? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Motion carried, thank you. Item B under city manager's report would provide for the approval of a change order from McGahee Construction for the Manny Bechet Room upgrade project at the Polar Community Building. On this matter, I've requested that uh, Parks and Recreation Director Wires present to the commission and community. Okay. Evening, Dan. Good evening, Mayor and Commission. Uh, this, this project, the Manny Boucher uh, renovation project, has been almost two years. And so it's, it's taking a few twists and turns, and uh, in essence, this change order is within the budget that we have. And as the Commission will recall, this went out to bid, boy, I want to say almost a year ago, and we did get zero bidders on this. So uh, that was under our first design, and so at that point in time, we brought in uh, at least one contractor who looked at it and put some other ideas to it. So that, in essence, uh, brought about a second design, which then we put that out to bid here recently, and with that second design, when that came in, that's what we were looking at. 
still, Brown brings access to the rink, brings uh, viewing into the rink from the room. And once the project was just about to get started, we uh, looked at it and uh, some things that we did not know that we did find out was due to the building when we got into it, there was an additional beam in the area and also that uh, due to the height restriction, to get it out of, the, out of the room and into the, the media deck, it would, it would not work. So in essence, we went from our first design to a second design. We could not do the second design. Basically, we've come back to the first design, and it gives two three by six windows, also a regular door out into the rink. And I think it's uh, with the help of the building department, the door coming out into the rink, we strongly uh, believe that there's not going to be a landing area or a deck that's going to be needed out into the arena. So literally, you go up the steps, we may have to make a little bit of a, a flattening or a little bit of a landing area, and you can go right into the room. So there's a lot of good things that have come to this. Uh, so you were able to see where you know, we took out the big sliding doors, put back in the windows, uh, brings our contingency down a little bit, but certainly it's all within the budget, so there's no real new money uh, that's needed. So that the, the recommendation tonight is to accept the change order, which basically brings it back to the original project, and so we can get this project moving. All right, now Commissioner Gage. <clears throat> I just, uh, Dan, I'm hoping that you can stress two points, that it's within budget. Yes. And that if it goes over budget, that, that no additional city money will likely go towards it. The, the, will the likely go towards it. Okay, Commissioner, the project, thanks for a good question. The project as it stands would, would commence and from all indications are we would be all within budget. If there's anything additional and extra, uh, the Bushi family is looking at doing some additional fundraising. Uh, the, the Sioux Tribe of Chippewa Indians, who's a, a partner with us in this project, has indicated that they may also look towards uh, assisting with any other items that may be needed, but uh, it's a good question. Well, I certainly uh, I really appreciate all the work you've done on this. Uh, it's, it's not been an easy process, so thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Commissioner Lynn, we need a motion. I would be happy to. Okay. Your Honor, I would so move the City Commission approve the change order to McGahee Construction LLC of Sault Ste. Marie as outlined for the Manny Boucher Room Upgrade Project at the Puller Community Building. Support. It's been moved, supported. Are there any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Thank you. Commissioner Bauer. Yes. Commissioner Gage. Yes. Commissioner Gary. Yes. Commissioner Lynn. Yes. Commissioner Twardy. Yes. Mayor Bospis. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item C under City Manager's report would provide for the approval of a first resolution for public improvements on a sidewalk replacement project SW-01-17. As the Commission is aware, the City Commission has appropriated funds for a project to replace sidewalks within a city as part of the sidewalk replacement program. The sidewalk replacement program is an effort to proactively identify sidewalks needing repair to alleviate trip hazards and otherwise improve sidewalk conditions within the city. This is intended to be an ongoing program with annual budget appropriations and costs to be shared with adjoining property owners through special assessment. In past years, sidewalks and main routes to school were identified to take part in the improvement program, and this year we're looking at making improvements within the downtown and with those sidewalks being the primary focus along with some areas outside of the downtown district in continuation of previous routes and, and where residents have requested the improvements. Bids have been received for the sidewalk program improvements with the cost of construction calculated as being about $7 per square foot for four inch and $9 per square foot for six inch concrete replacement. It is proposed that the adjacent property owner pay 50% of the cost and the city pay 50% of sidewalk replacement costs with the cost share being based on established ordinances of the City of Sault Ste. Marie. In order to initiate the special assessment proceedings, City Engineer Basista has included information for review by the Commission in accordance with these ordinances, including a location map showing the limits of the proposed project, a listing of the affected property owners for the proposed project, and a first resolution for public improvements for the proposed sidewalk improvement project. A public information meeting for affected property owners will be held on May 24th to review the plans, explain the need for the project, review work activities to be included, and the procedures for the assessments which would be levied on benefiting properties for the improvements. Accordingly, it's my recommendation that the City Commission approve
the first resolution for the public improvement and schedule a public hearing of necessity for the Monday, June 5th City Commission meeting for sidewalk improvement project on various streets, SW-01-17. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Bauer. Yeah, of course, for years um, in our goal setting sessions, we've discussed walkability, <coughs> sidewalks, large priority. Therefore, I move that the commission approve the first resolution of public improvement and schedule a public hearing of necessity for Monday, June 5th of this year, city commission meeting for sidewalk improvement project on various streets. Support. Any supported questions? Uh, Commissioner Torney. Yeah, thank you. I know that we're only approving the first resolution for the, um, for the hearing of necessity, but looking at the map, I mean, I don't see that Ashman Street from the Power Canal, the portage is. Well, I had the same question, and it's, that's the, what is that? The uh, thank you for that question. If you do review the included materials, it does appear at first glance that the entirety of the stretches of sidewalks on both sides would be replaced, but that's only the uh, definitions of the project area. Project Within area. Within that project oh, okay. area, okay. there are cracked sidewalks which are uh, intermittently spaced, which would be replaced. So generally yeah. speaking, it's the project area, but only certain sidewalks in that area are going to be replaced. Okay. All right. So then that being said, um, is she going to have more sidewalk replacement? Because I think last year we did larger areas than interspersed sections here and there and then I'm looking at the other sections on the map um, I don't think you can ever do too many sidewalks in Sault Ste. Marie it's so I'm just is kind there of a budget in a, there's a budget amount for that right uh, again thank you for that question this specific project does look at those portions of Ashman between Portage and the Power Canal with the cracked sidewalks uh, portions of Magazine and West Portage the southwest intersection of Grocap and Fort Street as well as uh, Valley from the north side of valley from Ryan to Summit, and there is past uh, budget allocations from past years, just over $68,000 remaining in allocation, and $20,000 that would be appropriated for the current budget fiscal year. So we're expecting that after the completion of this work, there will be funds remaining, okay. and certainly it's always our intention to, uh, given the construction season, take every opportunity we can. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? We have a motion and support. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Mayor Bosmus? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. <laughs> Item D under the city manager's report would provide for the approval to enter into closed session to discuss collective bargaining. As commissioners are aware, city administration has initiated discussions with the Department of Public Works, police officers, police records, firefighters, and clerical bargaining units for successor collective bargaining agreements that would become effective on July 1st, 2017. Section 8C of the State of Michigan Open Meetings Act specifically states that a public body may meet in closed session for strategy and negotiation sessions connected with the negotiation of a collective bargaining agreement. Accordingly, it's my recommendation that the City Commission enter into closed session for strategy and negotiation sessions connected with the negotiation of collective bargaining agreements in accordance with Section 8C of the State of Michigan Open Meetings Act at the end of the meeting. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Geary. I make a motion that we enter into closed session for strategy and negotiation sessions connected with the negotiation of collective bargaining agreements in accordance with Section 8C of the State of Michigan Open Meetings Act at the end of this meeting. Support. support. It's been moved, supported. Are there any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Mayor Bosmus? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. And that concludes the city manager's report for the time being. Thank you, Mayor and Commission. Okay, thank you. Item number seven is the status report. City manager. Thank you, Mayor. Item A under status report is an update on the city commission vacancy appointment process. As a reminder, and as city commissioners are aware, Former City Commissioner Brent Osterhout submitted his resignation during the April 17th regular meeting. And as commissioners are additionally aware, City Attorney Canelo has previously advised that the 30-day period of time within which an appointment could be made would begin at the time of the resignation from Mr. Osterhout being received. Accordingly, his, the acceptance of this resignation occurred at the May 1st regular meeting, meaning this window of time would extend to May 31st. As a reminder, it should be noted that at the April 17th regular meeting of the City Commission, the City Commission unanimously voted to accept ap applications from interested individuals who wish to fill the vacant seat created by this resignation. 
Applications from interested and qualified individuals were collected by the City Clerk's Office up until 5 p.m. on Friday, May 5th. At the end of that deadline, 13 individuals had filed an application to fill the balance of former Commissioner Osterhout's term. Information submitted by the applicants as well as a schedule of interviews has been included within the agenda materials which are posted online. It should be noted that interviews with applicants have been scheduled to start at 1 p.m. on Tuesday, May 16th, which is tomorrow, with the last interview being scheduled for 5 p.m. tomorrow as well. Thank you. Any questions on that? Okay. Next one. <coughs> Thank you. Item B under status reports is an update on the city composting schedule. Uh, just a reminder to the community that the composting schedule and additional information is listed online. And uh, for this season, as was the case for the past two years, uh, every other Wednesday there are hours established between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. with the alternating Wednesday having hours at the compost site from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then additionally, every other Saturday, there are hours uh, ranging from, lasting from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. So certainly, any questions, please contact uh, my office or the city clerk's office, or uh, please uh, grab a flyer on the website. Great. Any questions? Dr. Commissioner Gage. Uh, I appreciate this uh, infographic that we've got here. I'm going to make sure it's on Facebook. Uh, but I think you guys can kind of see by looking at that what I was getting at when we were in uh, the budget hearings about how the schedule is a bit hard to understand. And so hopefully we can get this this calendar out and we can make that public so people can check it easier mm -hmm. um, because it is kind of confusing to know when it's open when it's not that kind of stuff. So if you have this schedule, it's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Yeah. If you see it that way, yeah. it makes sense. If you don't, it's hard. Oh, what am I supposed to Sorry. Excellent. Commissioner Twardy. Can we, thank you, can we make sure that it's on the city's Facebook page too? Uh, we can certainly do that, Commissioner. Oh, yeah. thank okay. You. Okay. okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Next item. Uh, item C under status reports is an update on a special city commission meeting uh, that has been called to receive the initial redevelopment ready communities evaluation. A special meeting of the Sault Ste. Marie City Commission has been called for Wednesday, May 31st at 7 p.m. in the chambers with the purpose of the meeting being to hear an approximately 30 minute presentation by Ryan Suki of the MEDC as it relates to the city's participation in the redevelopment ready communities program. The presentation will be largely dedicated to reviewing the results of the city's completed self-evaluation, uh, which was previously submitted to the MEDC. While the meeting is open to the public, the intended audience is largely comprised of the City Commission, Planning Commission, and DDA Board. As commissioners are additionally aware, the MEDC has started to link a community's eligibility to access funding for downtown related projects and other projects to engagement in the RRC process. The City of Sault Ste. Marie is considered to be officially engaged in the process as it has thus far fulfilled the engagement criteria established by the MEDC. Therefore, the City is currently able to effectively compete for various state-funded grant programs that require engagement in this process. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioner. Everyone that sees the uh, September, the, or September, July, or June 31st? Yeah. Or, I'm sorry, May 31st at uh, 7 o'clock. I didn't have it in front of me, but uh, my birthday, we man. plan to be there. Okay. Okay. And item D under status reports is the 2017 construction update. Uh, City Engineer Basista was unable to be here tonight and will plan to present at the next meeting of the City Commission. We'll have the construction update at the next meeting. Correct. Okay. So that concludes the status reports? It does. Thank you, Mayor and Commission. Okay. Item number eight are matters presented by the public. Is there anyone in the audience that like to make a comment at this time? Okay, hearing none, we'll go to the uh, City Commission. Uh, Commissioner Gage. Um, thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to begin by saying uh, thank you to everyone who reached out to me this past week uh, to express their condolences and their thoughts. Um, it was certainly a difficult week for, for the campus and uh, for me personally, because I've worked with Tom so closely, but it really helped to see the, the outpouring of support and sympathy and things. And I wanted to leave everyone with, with kind of three thoughts that Tom really had um, impressed upon me. The first and foremost is he was a tremendous advocate for students and a tremendous supporter of students. And um, that's something I think is really important for us as a community uh, to recognize and to embrace, uh, given how important uh, the university is to to our community. 
Um, the second one is community um, and the importance of lifting each other up and of helping each other and a rising tide lifts all ships. And then the final one is that he dedicated his life to service and dedicated his life to, to giving of, to others and supporting other people. And I hope that, that if one thing can come out of this, this really tragic, horrible thing, I hope that we can realize that we all need to work together, that we need to talk a little bit nicer about each other and to each other, and that we need to learn that, that we need to work together and we need to heal. Because to be frank, there, there are going to be some challenging times ahead of us whether it's the city or whether it's the university, there are challenging times ahead of us. And if we can't pull together as a community, then we're gonna be in a really tough shape. And so um, I appreciate certainly, um, Mayor, you coming to the, to the memorial and, and offering your words and condolences. And just thank you to everybody for, for taking the time because it really, it really meant a lot to me and it really meant a lot to the campus and it really meant a lot to Teresa. So thank you. Thank you for those comments. Thank you. Anyone else? Commissioner Lynn. I just want to let everybody know that uh, I just voted for my last budget. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> I'm going to give myself a standing ovation. <laughs> <laughs> Move to adjourn. Support. Support. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Both same sign. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sure. Oh, we're